Tell me lies, tell me true. Hey, you know what? It's time for... It's time for Facts of Your Friends. Let's do it. Mm. <laughs> it's the music of, like, in a movie when there's a montage and a guy with a mullet and leather pants, like, kicks open the door and he has no shirt on. He's just smoking. That's that music. Play it again. It's <laughs> just, like, hip thruster music, dude. <laughs> Do you watch Stranger Things? No. Oh, anybody who knows what I'm talking about, Billy from Stranger Things, that's his music. That's his soundtrack. <laughs> Massive mullet, awesome. yeah. And it's a soundtrack to Facts Are Your Friends. All right, today we're going to talk about how to talk about sex with your partner. How to talk about sex, how to talk about sex. Let's talk about sex, baby. All right. Um, a couple of articles Kelly gave me here. One is from verywellmind.com. One's from psychologytoday.com. Um, different, different ways to talk about sex uh, with your partner. There's several things in here. Um, I have been having this conversation, as you can probably tell in the show. In, fa- in fact, it's funny. My wife and I, my wife was talking to me about something. Oh, we're making uh, the questions for humans cards. We're making a sex and intimacy deck. And so I asked my wife to like go through some of these with me. We were talking through them. And she had several questions that I had written down. She goes, don't ask that. And I was like, why not? And she goes, just don't ask it. It makes the whole room weird. And I said, I ask you that question. I've asked my friends that question. People come to the house, I ask them those questions. And she goes, yes. And you've been making rooms weird for years. <laughs> I was like, really? She goes, yes. All of your friends know it, that you're the most awkward person. So I'm learning in real time. I just will have, I just like talking with everybody about everything. And, and there's very few, if there's no things that are taboo or weird for me. Um, I've learned in the last several years that that's not the case um, with just about anybody. And so I have also learned um, just meeting people all across the country, um, the show, especially the calls that come in, the emails that come in, man, there are few things going on in um, Western relationships right now, like challenges with sex and intimacy, particularly how to have these conversations. I like this. I don't like this. I want to try this. And there's so much wrapped up into these conversations and there's so much ego. There's so much shame. There's so much. I don't know. There's so much embarrassment. Um, we have the data is pretty clear. We've got a, we are now there. We have an, a generation of men getting married that they have received their sexual education from pornography. And so they understand sex ed, they understand sex to be something that it is not. And um, there's very many, a whole bunch of women have received that over the, not as much as the men, the data says, but a, Millions of women have received sex ed or what they think is expected of them. And here, and of course, those are both very generalized, I know. But so here we find marriages are really struggling. I thought sex was going to be like this. And she's like, I had no idea. I thought sex was going to be like this. And I thought I was, and it's just turned into a quagmire. And what we do in our modern world is we don't have any tools for talking about things. We just have enough distractions. We just go our separate ways. And you've heard me say this. Then you find yourself two inches apart and 2,000 miles away from each other on the couch. Um, Him on his device, her on her device, and you're just in different planets together. And so there's something incredibly profound and uniting and quite honestly, just a ton of fun learning how to talk about sex with your spouse. Like learn how to talk about it. Let's just talk about it. And it ends up becoming fun things to talk about, silly things to talk about, serious things to talk about. Um, But there's just ways to do it, right? And so um, these two articles give a couple of ideas. Um, We'll link to them in the show notes. Um, They're not really scientific, if you will. It's just some best practices here. Um, There is a couple of things that come from some data that I can, that I'll I'll, I'll bring out. But here is what I'm going to suggest. Here's several, I wrote down seven things. Seven rules, if you will, for talking about sex with your spouse, with your romantic partner. Um, here's number one. Set specific times to have this conversation. Designate it. Say the words, we're going to talk about sex on Friday. We're going to go to dinner and talk about sex. We're going to talk about sex on Saturday on a long walk where we're sitting next to each other. And we don't even have to look at each other in the eye, but we're going to talk about it. We're going to practice that way. Don't spring it on somebody. 
or when you get frustrated or you don't feel self, I mean, you're feeling self-conscious and you take your shirt off. I mean, I'm talking about male or female. And it's like, do you think I'm attractive? Do you never, or what's that old joke? Like, you know, you're rolling over to go to sleep and then one of you, you know, your wife taps you on the shoulder and she's like, if I didn't have any arms and legs, would you still want to be with me? Right? Don't do that. That's not a productive conversation. That's a way to get a reaction out of somebody. And this is not a great conversation for reactions. It's a good conversation to have um, when everybody knows it's coming and we are prepared for it. So set a specific time. Um, if you need to like set it up, like, hey, we're going to talk about budgets and then we're going to talk about this and we're going to talk about the state of our sex life. It might be a five-minute conversation. It might be a 20-minute conversation. It might be two hours. Great. Um, and by the way, you think when you've been married three years that you've talked about everything, you haven't. Things begin to shift and morph. And hey, I heard about this and I saw this. And remember that couple in that movie yesterday? Do you want to try that? Or what did you think about that? Or that was weird. Or I heard this at work. The conversations will continue to evolve if you make it a regular part of your relationship interaction. So set specific times. Number two, own the awkwardness. The more you own the awkwardness, start the conversation. This is going to be weird. Or this is going to be awkward. Or I've never talked about uh, I've never talked about my body parts with somebody else before. I've never admitted this before. I've never talked about masturbation with somebody else before. I've never talked about this, my number of partners with somebody. I've never talked about, own the, uh, uh, just own the awkwardness. Just own it. This is going to be awkward. And then as you speak and in, into a, 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 like a, uh, you speak these things out in, into the world, you're honest about these things often for the first time out loud. And you're telling them to somebody who has looked you in the eye and told your friends and your community and your families and God, if you're a religious person, I will always be here. I won't leave you. And then you can begin to have these honest, real, deep conversations about, yeah, this is kind of what I'm into. This is what I'm about. This is what I like. I wish I didn't have this past, but I do. Or I wish I experienced this thing. Own the awkwardness. Okay, that's number two. It's going to be weird. Good. Number three, be specific. God almighty, we've got so many words for so many different body parts. And so we talk in circles about, you know, it's kind of weird. Here's what I mean. I don't like it when your tongue does X, Y, Z. Or whenever you kiss me, you do it too hard. I don't, I wish you kissed me gentler. Or, hey, try this. Or can we try this? Or I love it when. I love when you touch me here. When there are dishes, and by the way, it doesn't have to be just about body parts, such and body parts. When there are dishes in the sink, I my body can't fully relax. When you and I are fighting, and I know we had put a little star on today on the calendar. When we're having a fight, I just can't get into it. Um, we need to have this conversation first. So be specific and practice being specific. I like this thing. And for many of you, when you say, I like this thing, you're going to turn beet red. Your heart's going to start beating all weird. <laughs> and especially <sighs> when I say, I don't like this thing, which leads me to number four. Practice this. Practice not getting your feelings hurt. When you're husband, when your wife tells you, I don't like this. And they do it in a loving way. Obviously they can be mean about it and be cruel. But when somebody tells you that in a loving way, they are giving you insights into their soul, into the things that bring them happiness and eroticism and pleasure and joy. Rejoice in the fact that you've got some new data, some new tools, like some new ideas for moving forward and that you're not doing something that your partner doesn't like because if you're doing something that they don't like or in a way they don't like if you put on a cologne and you get like your leather vest and no shirt and you're like yeah and you like shave a mustache and you're like this it's it's party time weekend and you put that music on they were just playing and your wife is like oh god i hate this i hate this and then sex is weird and it's awkward and you're all super weird and the music you're playing is awful like wouldn't you rather hey when you like go down that road it makes me so uncomfortable it makes me think about x or y or it makes me feel this way i would love to try this 
And then, man, you can be into it and she can be into it. And everybody can be into it. And it changes the whole dynamic. So I this is generalized statement. Okay, this applies to more than just men, but more men than not I hear from women. Whenever I say, hey, I would like to try this, or instead of this, can we try this? That men get their feelings so hurt. Guys can be the worst with their egos. like, eh. And they got their sex ed from pornography, so they think sex is supposed to be like this. And it's not. It's not. And so men, set your ego down. And women, set your ego down. This is about learning and listening and trying to honor your partner. This isn't about being right. Or this is the way we, oh man. No hurt feelings, okay? To the best of your ability. If somebody's cruel and they try to hurt your feelings, well, you suck at this. Or my old boyfriend used to do this better than, well, yes, you should have your feelings hurt because someone's just being cruel, okay? Um, so be curious, be curious. Um, <laughs> I don't, we may have to edit this out, Okay. Uh, along the, the hurt feelings, I remember talking to, <laughs> talking to, um, uh, I was talking to a couple ones several years ago. <laughs> she, she thought she was amazing. And with a particular move that she had, according to him, the move was not amazing. It was awful it was so painful and he didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings and just kind of like was like and just endured it till finally he started to stop start avoiding sexual contact altogether because it, <laughs> it hurt and i'm only laughing because listening to them tell the story was a riot they're both super funny people um and she said the greatest gift she received is when he said you have to stop doing that because it hurts so bad stop and she was like, what? And then when she found out that she wasn't hurting him anymore, that was a gift to her. And yes, she was embarrassed like crazy. I can't believe this went off forever. And she was also kind of pissed. You let this go on this long without telling me this hurt instead of this wasn't awesome? Yes, I did. I was embarrassed. And then that kind of set the stage for doers We're just going to talk about everything because there's no reason to just endure this. this way, right? So there you go. Um, all right. Number five, don't replay or dig for performance reviews. Don't like after a sexual encounter, don't be like, all right, was that an A or a B or a C? Was that varsity moves? Don't do that. This is about relationship stuff. Now, if you want to compliment your partner, great. If you want to, when you're talking about it a couple of days later or a week later, um, hey, the other night, that was incredible. Or, Hey, I said I would try this thing one time. I did not dig it. I didn't dig it. It wasn't great. It wasn't fun. Um, I, I'm not super interested in doing that again. What did you think? Oh, I loved it. Uh, well, like, man, I'm glad you did, but it, I, it wasn't, I wasn't into it. Um, when you start play by playing in the moment, um, the act of sex itself is such a vulnerable, intimate engagement. Right afterwards is such a release of neurological chemicals it's a physical whoosh it is not a time for learning and for uh critique it's a moment for whew. and so if you is critique to be given if there's conversations to be had a take critique out of it and if you are insecure about hey did you like that what did you think about that the number of people who have told me i can't stand it when my husband and wife asked me, how was it? What'd you think? Was it pretty awesome? Don't do that. Don't do that. Create an environment in your relationship where they'll let you know. I'll tell you. If it, I mean, it was, it was awesome. I don't, we, we, do we need to go down the, I thought you knew it was awesome when I was yelling or I was smiling or I was like, wh whatever was going on in, in, in there at the time. So, um, don't dig for performance reviews. Okay. Be at peace. And. If something's awesome, if you're part of something new or something incredible or awesome or what was meaningful or felt right or you felt super connected, say that. Say that. And by the way, again, it doesn't have to be about some sex thing. It can be, hey, last night, start to finish, you helped out with bedtime with the kids. Man, you just went, like, it really helped out with the, with the uh, dishes. 
I got to take a long bath. It was incredible. Dude, the whole night I felt super connected. I felt seen. I felt loved. I felt it just connected. Say those things. Those are awesome. Six, have soup. Tons of fun. Have fun with the conversations. Okay? Have fun. Um, ask each other about fantasies. What are you, what's like a thing you've never told anybody that you you would never do it, but you would like, I'd want to know. I just want to know what it's going to be like. Um, what are some things that like, I heard about this once. Like, have you ever heard about that? Like, have those, com- that can be so fun. It can be erotic in itself. Having the conversation like, oh my gosh, my wife is talking to me about this. My husband's talking about, this. yes, have those conversations. Um, I've talked about this on the show, the erotic envelope system. It's sometimes hard to say, hey, honey, I want to try this particular sex move or I want to try this particular, that's hard. It's awkward. It's weird. So. Uh, the idea was get 10 envelopes for 50 cents at Walmart or Walgreens and you take five and she takes five or vice versa. And you write down, I want to try this and I just want to try it. And <laughs> the rule is you got to be curious, not judgmental. You can't be like, oh my gosh, you sick for, unless, unless it's like, whoa, whoa. Right. But be like, what? <laughs> okay. I don't know how, I don't know how this works. I don't know how we can make this happen. I'm in. I'm down. Um, I'm just curious. Tell me about it. Tell me about like the <laughs> tell me about what you want. And everyone listening to this, you have a thing that just popped into your head. That's why I'm not telling you uh, a couple of, of ideas because I'm just going to want you to go with whatever just popped into your head. Um, and sometimes it's I'll just tell you, like me and my wife did this. We one of hers was French kissing. I miss just French kissing. And I was like, uh. Okay. So we French kissed and it was kind of awesome. It was awesome. It was awesome. And okay. Last one. Um, over the course of this conversation, be honest about pain, about past hurts. If you are a abuse survivor and there is a context of safety in your relationship and your marriage, or if you're with a counselor, be honest about things that, bring you pain, discomfort that make you um, feel less than, okay? Whether that's a request for a particular sex act, whether that is a way your partner's approaching you, whether that's a way, like whatever, like be honest about things that happen in your past. Be honest about pain, okay? And I made light of it earlier um, just because of that particular situation the two people are hilarious, but there's a lot of time pain's not funny at all, not even a little bit. In fact, it's disturbing and someone needs to raise a flag and say, hey, I'm not comfortable with this. This hurts. Stop. Um, Or this reminds me of the way a former girlfriend talked to me and it makes me super uncomfortable. A former boyfriend used to do like, I'd stop, stop, right? Um, Be very honest about your pain. Okay. So that's seven, seven things, seven ways you can talk about sex with your partner. Please make this a regular part of 2023 for you and like for you and your spouse, like talk about it, talk about it, talk about it, man, having the conversations, be willing to be curious, said judgmental, having fun with this, man, you can change your life. 